Sentence for a man convicted of throwing a fake pipe bomb into the home of the former town of Eden supervisor. Good evening, I'm Kelly Dudzik. Erie County District Attorney John Flynn says 41 year old Adam Jones of Buffalo was sentenced to three years of probation during his appearance in state Supreme Court this morning. This happened back in March of 2022. Prosecutors say Jones threw a fake pipe bomb into the front window of a home in Eden. Jones was convicted of one count of attempted placing of a false bomb or hazardous substance. We spoke with the DA late this afternoon about why he feels the judge gave Jones just probation. During the course of this whole um, prosecution, he spent 60 days in jail. Um, so he did, he did spend time in jail. And Senator Adam Jones um, has issues. All right, he, he needs help, all right? And be, by putting on probation, we're gonna get him the help that he needs. A judge also issued a final no contact order of protection for the victims that will last for five years. So joining me live now is Melissa Hartman, the former town of Eden supervisor who was also running for Erie County clerk when this happened. Melissa, thank you for being here with us this evening. You told us this afternoon that your concern was less with what happened to the defendant today, but more about why the people you believe organized the attack were not prosecuted. Here's how the DA responded to our question about that situation. This was investigate, investigated ad nauseum, okay? We spent hundreds of man hours on this case. I had, a, I had to, in total five ADAs, five separate ADAs, including my first deputy ADA, my number two in charge, okay, investigating this whole matter here, okay? She's correct, and I'll, I'll concede, she's correct that no arrests were made and no prosecution was made on what the, the genesis, the alleged genesis of why Adam Jones threw his pipe bomb, but we can't prove it. So Melissa, you wrote a letter that you read in court to the judge expressing concern that no one else was charged in connection with this crime. So what's your reaction to what the DA just said? I'm, I'm very appreciative of all the work that the DAs have put into this case. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a DA and I'm not an investigator, so I clearly can't make the decision on how they move forward. My concern is that our family is in, is continued at risk. You know, we, we are living in fear still. Um, you know, we have concerns that the fact that the person who was really responsible for what has happened to my family, what has happened to our neighborhood, um, has basically gotten away with this. Um, and I wonder if that emboldens anyone to continue on what they're doing. I also have concerns, uh, you know, what it has done for a political office, for my future, uh, for the future of anyone who, who might be thinking that they want to serve their communities and they watch something like this and the fact that there is not a lot of resolve and, and, and not a lot of prosecution. Um, that they may not consider doing something like that. There are good people out there who want to serve their communities. Um, and I think about women who are threatened a lot more. Uh, Percentage-wise, if you look at a lot of the studies that are being done, uh, women have uh, around 66% of, of all total threats. And I don't want this to affect somebody um, stepping forward and serving their community. And the judge, in the letter that you read today, you also said that if this had happened where you worked, the situation would be different, but it happened at your home and things may have been prosecuted differently. DA Flynn told us that you are correct about that federal statute. Um, is there anything you're gonna do to advocate for change when it comes to the laws surrounding this type of situation? Yes, so, um, you know, I've been, I've been speaking with some legislators, state legislators, and, uh, and, and, and even have expressed this to our, our senators, our U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. And, there needs to be more done to help and protect those that are serving in the public at every level, from the local all the way up. Um, there's obviously been an increased amount of violence and threats towards elected officials. And especially it's almost- with social media too. Especially with yeah. social media. And it's almost become normalized. And I think we need to step back and understand the implications that that has um, at every level of government, um, from those not running to those that um, are, are leaving office, uh, which is happening especially for women all across the country. Uh, women are leaving elected office at alarming rates, including that example here in Erie County. Um, next year, there are no women running for town supervisor position, which I think is is, is alarming. Um, so. 
I have just started a new position, so I'm extremely busy, but one of my um, goals is to pursue legislation where you're not just protected at your place of employment, because when you are a community leader, you're not just sitting at your desk. Um, we have a family. Uh, most people who are elected officials have families. They shouldn't have to feel that their parent um, or their spouse or them, themselves are in danger because we're serving the community and we're, you know, we're a face of the community. Um, and so I think that we need to look at that. There are laws and examples of that specifically in California. Um, where this would have been prosecuted different had we had different laws on the books. And you mentioned you already had conversations with people who are thinking about getting into politics, saw what happened to you, and decided maybe they don't want to do it. So what kind of conversations have you had with people about that? Um, it's, it's a tough one uh, because in reality they watched what I went through, they watched what my family went through, and it's hard to say that that won't happen to you. I would like to think that our situation is unique, but as you know through stories that we see on an almost daily basis, we're not. Uh, we're not unique and so it's, it's a difficult to say, you know, my eight years as town supervisor have been wonderful and we've made a lot of strides in our community and I've done a lot of regional government and uh, not just in Erie County but in New York State and we've made some real change. Um, but unfortunately that comes with consequences and so the conversations that I've had is you know you do have to have thick skin uh, you have to deal with these issues um, you know I think that you'd be able to do that but I can't guarantee to them what has happened to me won't happen to them so um, again it's just very unfortunate especially since we weren't able to completely alleviate uh, you know the fear for my family um, we know that it hasn't been prosecuted to the fullest extent with and you know I'm not blaming anybody for that but I feel that when something like this happens a really great example needs to be done on the law enforcement side and the prosecution side so that there is a clear message just as the January 6 prosecutions are coming down that this won't be tolerated. All right Melissa Hartman thank you for joining us tonight on our town hall we appreciate it. Thank you for having me.